Hey, my name is Dr. Scott Atlas. I am a professor at Stanford University. I, I am a faculty member of a policy institute called the Hoover Institution. Stanford University is in Stanford, California in the United States. The challenges around the globe are similar even though countries of course uh, have their own unique uh, issues. Uh, the big challenges are that there is an aging of the population and so with that aging, although that is a good thing that people are living longer, uh, comes a much higher incidence of chronic diseases that are very serious and that includes cancer, heart disease, and stroke. And with those diseases, as the populations age and the higher and higher frequency of those diseases being found, we find that those diseases are challenging because they are so expensive to diagnose and treat the patients. Those are the diseases that require a lot of medical, sophisticated medical technology including medical imaging, medical devices, uh, long-term uh, pharmaceutical treatment, and of course these things all cost a lot of money in terms of their development and then ultimately in terms of what patients or insurers or governments have to pay. So these are, the aging of the population is probably the number one public health care issue because with that brings this huge number of patients with Alzheimer's disease among the other disease in addition to the other diseases that I mentioned and these are long multi-decade uh, health issues the second big public health issue that is happening all over the globe is due to an increasing incidence of obesity and so with obesity comes a, a series of other disorders including worse outcomes from all the known disorders that there are in every surgical procedure hospitalization, but also things like diabetes and common health problems that are risk factors for the big diseases that I mentioned, like stroke and heart disease. And this is true all over the world. Uh, you know, the, the diseases and their diagnosis and management are just more and more accurate and sophisticated and they require more and more knowledge. For instance, we're entering an era where genetics and molecular biology is now kind of combining with medical treatment, diagnosis and treatment. And in that kind of world, where we're, where this is what we're going to see over the next couple of decades, more and more uh, combined use of genetics and things like medical imaging or targeted treatments, targeted drugs, you know, this is not going to be more simple. It's going to be more complex. So the era of GP medicine, I call, we say GP, general practitioner medicine, I think that is really a thing of the past. Yes, medical technology is really critical. I mean, I view medical technology uh, as the cure rather than the, the problem with healthcare. Uh, it is true that medical technology is quite expensive, whether it's diagnostic or therapeutic, like devices and things like this. But I think this is, this is what we want in terms of targeted diagnosis, more efficient diagnosis, more efficient treatment, and less dangerous treatment. All of the medical devices and even the sophisticated diagnostic equipment like MRI, that is very helpful in being able to avoid unnecessary surgery, avoid biopsies, avoid uh, misdirected diagnoses because we're more accurate, we can tailor treatments and uh, sh shorten hospital stays. All these things are, are safer for patients, better for patients, and ultimately actually save money, although there's an initial investment up front. Yes, the, the challenges are, are enormous uh, with uh, both in countries with resources and in countries uh, that are developing nations. Uh, because neurologic disease uh, first of all, there's an increasing incidence. We know this by the projections of aging population, as I mentioned. We know in India specifically the incidence of stroke is projected to dramatically increase due to both the aging of the population, but also due to the increase of the risk factors for stroke, like high blood pressure and diabetes. 
And so the challenges are enormous in terms of being able to have enough medical knowledge and trained specialists, specialist physicians to diagnose and manage these patients. But the other problem is a, an education of the public. Most patients are not aware of the kind of symptoms and the abnormalities that they would have in a neurologic disease. So they have very, there's some good data that shows that in, particularly in India, there's a low awareness of the symptoms of, say, acute stroke. And most people don't know the symptoms. They don't even know that there's a treatable uh, disease going on. So there's a public education issue, particularly when there is a large uh, low-income population, uh, that, that I think this is a big role of government, uh, a big positive for government is to increase the public knowledge about the diseases and also about the risk factors. I mean, we all know that increasing obesity is mainly a, a lifestyle uh, disease, and in that disease, you get diabetes, high blood pressure. These things are all related to each other, and this is a public education thing. We all know how education impacted the incidence of smoking, it, and there was a very large effort with that. Uh, and I think that, that that has to continue, but also I think there's a lot of education to be learned about the neurologic diseases, but also about the risk factors for neurologic disease and cardiovascular disease. Well, I mean, there's no question that MRI has revolutionized medical diagnosis, and, but also in patient management. I mean, MRI, there's no, every patient with cancer, for example, should be getting an MRI, and, and most, many of them do, because this is the way the disease is not just diagnosed, but it's the way the disease is staged. We have to determine before treatment starts if the disease has spread. And so no matter what part of the body, really, MRI is the most important test for that. You know, MRI has revolutionized uh, imaging brain diseases. And uh, this is obvious in every serious disorder of the brain. The one area that MRI has not uh, yet really shown its, its uh, potential is in Alzheimer's disease, which is, of course, the most common neurologic disorder there is. So uh, there are many startup companies and startup ideas uh, right now, but I, I certainly believe that, as I mentioned, the combination of genetics and imaging, MRI will be the key to uh, contributing to these new diagnoses as well as targeted treatments, directing treatment toward the individual diseases based upon the genetics of the tumor itself, of the patient itself. You know, so there's a lot of overlap in, in what will happen with that. Well, my focus on India goes back uh, a long way because I have been here, f coming here for more than a decade teaching. Uh, and I've had many uh, trainees uh, in the U.S. that were of Indian descent. Uh, and I enjoy teaching in India because uh, there's so many smart young doctors here uh, that are very enthusiastic. So uh, my focus on India in that sense for education is, is really for uh, my personal, uh, you know, enjoyment of coming to India. But uh, the reality is that uh, I see India as uh, an example of a country that with the improvements in the basic health that have occurred over the previous decades, where you are, like I say, getting, uh, reducing significantly the diseases that are infectious, the diseases of uh, malnutrition, the diseases of motor vehicle accidents. And now you start seeing as those diseases decline, India now will have this aging of the population and all the, the positives and the negatives of that. So I think this is a very uh, important uh, country to be in. Now, the other part of India that is very good is there's a significant entrepreneurial spirit uh, in India. Technology and the innovation in medical technology is really the key to uh, better health. Okay, that this is the bo the bottom line, I think. And so uh, we don't want to go back to what you said, where the era of the general practitioner where it was a bedside diagnosis, because the, the fact is that they were wrong most of the time. And they took patients to surgery for appendicitis when they didn't have appendicitis. And now we can do things in a very uh, tailored, very uh, accurate way in what we call non-invasive, meaning using a, a, a very safe tool like ultrasound or CT or MRI 
instead of going in and doing surgery. And so it's the innovation, it's the entrepreneurial uh, spirit that creates in the right environment the innovation that eventually is very high positive impact on society. The most important uh, reason that MRI stands out uh, is that it's so exquisitely detailed in the vis visualization of the tissue, of the organs, of the internal structures and physio physiologic abnormalities or pathologic abnormalities in the body, far superior to anything else, including very sophisticated CT. And the second thing that goes along with that is that there's zero radiation. And so uh, there's never been a safer diagnostic tool than an MRI. And so I think this is underappreciated, really. Although all these things, CT scanning is very safe, but at some point there is a radiation dose. And if you're doing a very sophisticated CT scan multiple times on a young child, there's a, it, it can add up to a very significant dose of radiation. MRI has zero radiation. There's no health impact whatsoever that's ever been shown uh, on MRI. And so uh, this is like an incredible tool with, un with uh, really unsurpassed diagnostic capabilities. What kinds of diseases does MRI help specifically? Well, one we mentioned already, which was cancer. And this is not just the detection, but also the management of the patient. So in the initial stage, it's changed everything for when, how, when we uh, can, should or shouldn't start treatment and what kind of treatment because we can stage the disease. We can see if the cancer has spread to the liver, to the brain, uh, much better than ever before. But we also can follow the patient with cancer during the treatment. We can monitor the response to treatment. Okay, so there's a diagnostic capability. There's a patient management capability. And so besides, moving away from cancer, we could talk about uh, all serious brain diseases, uh, particularly stroke, uh, dramatic impact uh, compared to anything prior to MRI, epilepsy, you know, all, uh, many of the most common diseases uh, in the brain, cardiac disease, although there are other tools to use cardiac diseases, blood vessel imaging with MRI without having to do a catheter procedure, uh, or inject any kind of hazardous contrast agent, uh, imaging the blood vessels that supply the brain, that supply the heart, that supply the legs. Uh, I mean, the, the, in, in women's imaging, pelvic disorders. I mean, MRI and musculoskeletal disease, whether it's from a trauma, from an, a sports injury, but uh, many other diseases, including spread to bone of various other illnesses. So uh, you can name every organ system, and MRI has a very, very important uh, role. I've, been a, I've used GE MRI equipment for 25-plus years, so I know their, their company quite well. And um, GE's, uh, I think what's special about the, about the company really is their commitment to educating doctors about how to use the equipment. I mean, from GE's perspective, the best customer, the best doctor customer, is an educated customer because they don't really want to uh, or benefit from selling equipment to doctors who don't understand how to use it efficiently. I mean, this is a negative. So, uh, and in that role, I, I was invited by GE to come and speak, and some of the uh, important advances uh, of GE, particularly in MRI, that's what I'm talking about in neurologic disease, uh, involve uh, ways to increase the speed of imaging. Okay, so faster uh, scanning, whether it's the, the actual time on the scanner or facilitating more specific diagnoses to tailor the exam in a shorter period of time, is better for the patient. Uh, because they don't have to spend so much time in a confined environment like an MRI scanner. It's better for getting more patients done. Uh, and the diagnosis is more accurate. So with their special uh, implementations of uh, scanning technology, like their synthetic images that called MAGIC, uh, which is a way to generate all the different images in a very short, single, what we call acquisition, a single scan, uh, this is going to be a significant improvement in terms of the time uh, spent. Uh, they also have technology that makes the environment more comfortable for patients, particularly something they call silent scanning, uh, which uh, as everyone who's had an MRI 
knows that there's a significant amount of noise uh, in the room from the machine itself. And they have found a very sophisticated way to uh, almost eliminate that noise so that the noise is similar to the background noise in the room.